it's amazing how many people don't like Ron Paul out there. You would you would think that that he personally did something to them, or he's like Obama or something. A lot of stuff he says makes perfect sense. Ron Paul's numbers up. It's time for him to undergo the smear campaigns. They're scared half to death of this Ron Paul thing. They really truly scared that. You know why? Because it's gonna undermine the powers that be and they can't control him. And I tell you what, we need to get a security force around that man. You can't convince me that this man is a racist. Just listen to all the stuff he said. He is the least racist out of all the candidates, including, including Obama. They're slandering this guy's name and running it through the mud because they are truly afraid that he's gonna unleash the potential of the American people, dog. And it, it would be a revolution, dog. And, and this revolution doesn't have to be fought with guns and, and blood flowing in the streets, you know what I mean? It's gonna be a philosophical revolution. We have to change the way we're thinking. So I'll post as a black man. As a matter of fact, I'm going to approach my contribution to Ron Paul's message of liberty from a black perspective, a pro-black perspective. I wanted to make it very clear that Ron Paul, he is not a racist. I mean, look at what he talks about. First of all, he's a libertarian. So, you can't be a libertarian and be racist at the same time. You just can't. Ron Paul, keep on doing you, man. When they start coming with that nonsense, Answer the question like you did, and then take the damn mic off and walk on out the door. Let me tell you something, folks. This is nothing but grandstanding. We should know the corporatized media are professional spin doctors. They see that this man is in the hunt for the Republican presidential nomination. It's funny. You think. And this is going to be, you know, um, just really common sense. And since it's racist, and since they're going off the premise that Ron Paul is racist towards black people, then I have to speak to black America right now. I have to speak to, just right now, of course this video is for all, but I'm speaking specifically right now to black Americans, if you're listening. Do you really think the corporatized media cares about how Ron Paul feels about you. Do you really think they really care? And if they do by exposing him as being some kind of old, white, bigoted racist, what are they going to do about it? Certainly, it's not to raise you out of the condition in which you're in, but only to knock off a man who can bring back The ideas of natural rights, the ideas that I can do for myself without any intervention or meddling from government. Do you really think they care about that? No, they don't. They don't care about you, Black America. They want to use the ideas of racism. They want to use this as a tool to knock this man off. That said, what's, what makes this most interesting is this, is his being charged with being a racist because of some comments made in the newsletter that he was over, you know, 18 or 20 years ago. I'm not dismissing that, I'm just saying it's interesting because Ron Paul's against the war on drugs. And as it stands now, blacks constitute about 14% of illegal drug use users in the United States. But there's 65% of those incarcerated for nonviolent drug use. 14% of the users, 65% incarcerated for nonviolent drug use. That's a huge difference. That's beyond racism. That's way out of proportion. There may be reasons, there may be not, but the bottom line is those are the facts. And those are facts that Ron Paul is actually quoted as well. Now, under Ron Paul, what he would like to do is he'd like to end the war on drugs, first of all. What he would also like to do, the biggest part of this, is that he wants to pardon all nonviolent drug users. The overwhelming disproportionate uh, uh, percentage of black people who are incarcerated for nonviolent drug use will be then released, which means black uncles, brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts will be released from jail or prison like that. Now, if you want to talk about something someone said under his, under his you know, management of a paper 20 years ago, that's fine. But to me, that totally annihilates any claims of racism. But the thing is, even if he did harbor negative feelings or biased feelings or racist feelings, 
To be honest, I may have a few feelings about certain groups when I sing too. I don't choose to. It might be the most sophisticated thing, but I think everybody has some group feelings whether they admit it or not, to an extent. Anybody who's honest does, I would say. And to tell the truth, I don't particularly care if Ron Paul likes people my height, people my color, people my shape, people my sexuality, people my income status, people who live in the area I live in. I don't care if he likes me. I just need him to do his fucking job. That's all I care about. Why don't they like Ron Paul? I, I guess they brainwashed. No, no different from the North Korean people, I guess. You know, they they they, they brainwashed and believe in the, all of the, the the status quo. You know, all of the rhetoric that these other candidates been talking for years. You know, all these ever since presidential debates been going on. I say you only have a handful of of uh, candidates that really are for the people. You don't, you know, most of them are not for the people. Most of them will say anything to walk into that office. A lot of people say, "Oh, well, Ron Paul." He seems like he's saying he can say whatever he wants to step in office, and I and I said, well, I, I shot the guy another PM. I said, the difference between Ron Paul and the other candidates is he's not saying what they're saying. That's that's how you can differentiate him from the other um, candidates. They're saying on the same bullshit that Obama been saying. This whole, this whole everything is dualism. You know what I mean? Like you watch you watch any type of mainstream. Uh, news outlet. Everything is dualism. Left versus right. Republican versus Democrat. Christian versus Muslim. You know what I mean? And they're all straying away from the fact that we're all people. And and the highest, the highest level of attainment throughout our history, throughout any civilized nation, has always been to reach for freedom and liberty. You know what I mean? And the fact, the fact is, Ron Paul got the best message hands down. And I'm gonna tell you, don't play into the games, man. You know what I mean? Because we fell for that Barack Obama shit. I voted for the dude. You know what I mean? Uh, and he was basically running off. Oh, I, I, I'm a scholar of the Constitution. I will follow the Constitution. And yo, this motherfucker's been trampling all over that shit since the day he got in the office. You know what I mean? Hard time trying to convince me that Ron Paul is a racist and that he is bad for America. Because you know, for a while I stopped believing in this voting and all this crap. Because you know it looked it looked fraud, and by the way, your your media report you can tell it's kind of biased. Matter of fact, it's really biased. So I said, man, I don't believe in this crap. After used car salesman Obama came up and just basically crapped on every single body and went against everything he said, I lost hope because I didn't see change. But now Ron Paul, he making some sense, man, and and I can see that this guy he's legitimate. And you jokers are tripping, Ron Paul. Check out the website and um, start listening to a lot of the stuff he says when he's on TV. Cause every time I I didn't see him do, he made he's been making perfect sense about the health care, about the wars, about the Federal Reserve. All of this stuff is just on point, man. And I didn't I didn't fact check the dude and everything. And everything he has said has been truth. And a lot of stuff Obama has said has been lies. I wanted to talk about what I saw on Fox News about Ron Paul being a spoiler. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've got to laugh because just <laughs> the way they say it <laughs> with such disgust, <laughs> they make him sound like he's in a box or a carton of eggs <laughs> the refrigerator that the bad. He spoiled it. <laughs> He's gonna spoil everything. Man, man, they are fighting hard. They are fighting so hard. Look at the history of our country and look and see what this country has done to every single presidential candidate that would not bow down their knee to the establishment and do it the way that they say do it. Hey. All this warmongering, senseless, useless and stuff. The empire is on the run and is just about at its end. All you black people out there, don't pay attention to this mudsling and stuff. Take a person at their words. Take a person at their words. And then listen to what they say. And then look at the spirit in which these people speak and talk and how they just continue to continue to continue to continue to continue. You know why? Because they don't have nothing else. Rick Romney is a hypocrite. Michelle Bachman, she need to go on back home somewhere. And her stupid says she looks just totally idiotic with her fear mugging. We better get them. We better get them. You know, just stupid thing and stuff. But anyway, um, 
I think the establishment is afraid because the whole entire country is waking up. So the more they sling mud at Ron Paul, the more that people, they look and they see, they understand. And then people like me, people like other people who see what goes on, we are able to reach the people who can't uh, read between the lines of what's really truly going on. So To change our thoughts about Ron Paul, it's precisely why you see many YouTube videos of black folks making videos calling Ron Paul a racist, while at the same time, not even giving so much as a whim about his constitutional stance on issues like economic reform, gun rights, personal and natural rights, the very things that can get the very people he's accused of being racist of out of the situation in which they have found themselves in. It's funny. All one has to do is follow the trail of deceit by this corporate media. That's why I say this man is not a racist. He may sound wacky to the average American because he actually makes sense. Peace. Imagine for a moment that somewhere in the middle of Texas, there was a large foreign military base, say Chinese or Russian. Imagine that thousands of armed foreign troops were constantly patrolling American streets in military vehicles. Imagine they were here under the auspices of keeping us safe or promoting democracy or protecting their strategic interests. Imagine that they operated outside of U.S. law, that the Constitution did not apply to them. Imagine that every now and then they made mistakes or acted on bad information and accidentally killed or terrorized innocent Americans, including women and children, most of the time with little or no repercussions or consequences. Imagine that they set up checkpoints on our soil and routinely searched and ransacked entire neighborhoods of homes. Imagine if Americans were fearful of these foreign troops and overwhelmingly thought America would be better off without their presence. Imagine if some Americans were so angry about them being in Texas that they actually joined together to fight them off in defense of our soil and sovereignty because leadership and government refused or were unable to do so. Imagine that those Americans were labeled terrorists or insurgents for their defensive actions and routinely killed or captured or tortured by the foreign troops on our land. Imagine that the occupier's attitude was that if they just killed enough Americans, the resistance would stop. But instead, for every American killed, ten more would take up arms against them, resulting in perpetual bloodshed. Imagine if most of the citizens of the foreign land also wanted these troops to return home. Imagine if they elected a leader who promised to bring them home and put an end to this horror. Imagine if that leader changed his mind once he took office. The reality is that our military presence on foreign soil is as offensive to the people that live there as armed Chinese troops would be if they were stationed in Texas. Shutting down military bases and ceasing to deal with other nations with threats and violence is not isolationism. It is the opposite. Opening ourselves up to friendship, honest trade, and diplomacy is the foreign policy of peace and prosperity. It is the only foreign policy that will not bankrupt us in the short order as our current actions most definitely will. I share the disappointment of the American people and the foreign policy rhetoric coming from the administration. The sad thing is, our foreign policy will change eventually, as Rome's did, when all budgetary and monetary tricks to fund it are exhausted. Are exhausted.